today we are going to have our 37th lecture on frequency lock loop. Let us just consider what we have already done in the last class that is the 36th lecture on phase lock loop. We consider the true phase lock loop is something that has only the phase lock to a specific value phase difference between in input and its output is locked to a specific frequency a fre I mean at a given frequency to a specific value of phase shift of for say for example 90 degrees quadrature irrespective of the incoming frequency it is only locked to uh, 90 degree phase shift that is what is truly called a phase lock loop which is what is commonly used in uh, tuning filters or obtaining multiphase uh, signal from a single phase. So this phase lock loop we have seen how it can be converted into by a minor modification of replacing the voltage controlled phase generator by VCO an independent oscillator within the loop. So into a frequency lock loop which is now popularly called okay as uh, phase lock loop okay. The other uh, phase lock is even though used for tuning is not all that popular. Now we saw that that particular phase lock loop true phase lock loop is a first order system okay if uh, it is an integral control system and it becomes a second order if the uh, comparator that is used within the op amp used within in the integral control has a finite gain bandwidth product. So basically it is an integral control system for locking to phase. Now today we will see all about the frequency lock loop. So as I already explained what is common to both these loops is the phase detector which is at present we are using the multiplier low pass filter configuration for the phase detection and if you want to increase the loop gain you can put an amplifier with Ka as the gain amplifier gain and it is compared with the V reference here and that error is amplified. So ultimately just like any other uh, control loop integral proportional PID control we have this steady state error coming to 0 if the loop gain is very large that means this voltage sets itself to V reference. V reference is 0 then we have seen that cos phi in the V average at this point okay has to be 0 which means phi should be pi, pi by 2. That aspect is followed here also okay so it is the same uh, topology except that this VC voltage control phase generator is replaced by VCO where KVCO is the sensitivity factor of the VCO which is now becoming part of the loop gain. So let us see uh, what happens in this case in terms of um, understanding the frequency locking. We know that omega not by omega i we have shown okay is equal to delta phi naught by delta phi i here okay the phase difference is phi okay if this, this is delta phi i and this is delta phi naught we know that in this uh, phase uh, lock loop we have this as kpd divided by 1 plus s by 
um, omega LP and omega LP is 1 by RC. So and then this has uh, Ka as the amplification factor here and then this is Kvcp this whole thing forms the loop gain. So 1 by 1 plus 1 over loop gain is what is equal to delta phi naught by delta phi i if this is delta phi naught this is delta phi i and if that is divided by delta t common then by definition delta phi naught by delta t is omega naught and delta phi i by delta t is omega i rate of change of phase is frequency radian frequency. So this is how we are proving that in the case of frequency as input and frequency as output okay output frequency is going to follow the input frequency let us say this is a frequency follower or phase lock loop or frequency lock loop. So that is how we had to discuss the first effect in terms of whenever frequency change occurs small to a small extent we have to consider it as a change in phase and say that output phase change is going to be same as input phase change and that is why output frequency is going to be equal to input frequency and the transfer function for omega naught by omega i is also 1 by 1 plus 1 over gr. This is how we indirectly show that uh, phase lock loop like this in this case is a frequency lock loop okay. So omega naught by omega i now we have shown is delta phi naught by delta phi i is equal to 1 by 1 plus 1 over gl what is this gl. So as far as the phase detector is concerned it takes on the same uh, uh, sensitivity factor kpd okay it is converting phase to uh, voltage with the help of the low pass filter whose transfer function is this and amplifier is concerned it is Ka only that part of VCO since VCO is something that converts uh, the uh, DC voltage input to a frequency this is not defined as KVCO and what we are interested in as far as phase detector is concerned it is delta phi naught okay which is of interest to us. So delta phi naught that check place because the frequency is delta phi naught by delta omega naught okay delta omega naught by delta Vc. So change of phase with respect to frequency okay this is nothing but 1 over yes integration. So that means the uh, this is nothing but KVCO. So VCO can be represented when the output is a change in phase okay by KVCO by S as the transfer function. So that is what is done here KVCO by S is the transfer function of the VCO when output change in phase is what is considered okay. So the overall loop gain therefore is KPD, KA, KVCO which is called the DC loop gain GLO but please remember that this is not a ratio this is uh, nothing but a frequency in dimension radians per second. So that divided by S is a ratio that into 1 plus s by omega lp of here. So this whole thing in this GLO is what is called the DC loop gain of the phase lock loop KPD KA into KVC. So 
omega L p equal to 1 over R c in which case 1 by 1 plus 1 over loop gain is now going to come as S by G L o into 1 plus S by omega L p. So, 1 by 1 plus S by G L o plus S squared by G L o into omega L p. So, this is a second order system 1 by 1 plus S by omega n natural frequency of the system into Q of the system plus S by omega n square. So, the PLL the basic PLL as against the uh, through PLL that we had discussed earlier is a second order system whereas, the basic PLL earlier considered was the first order system. Okay. And uh, the omega natural frequency of the PLL is square root of GLO into omega LP comparing it and quality factor is by comparison root of GLO by omega LP. Normally the GLO is made very high compared to omega LP and therefore Q of the PLL is essentially a high Q system. So, just like any other control system which we had considered earlier we might have to uh, introduce a 0 in the transfer function okay, or the low pass filter such that this Q can be brought down to um, a manageable value of 1 or so. Okay. So, the design of uh, the entire system is following exactly same as that of the amplifier feedback amplifier or any feedback system once you consider it in terms of a phase following action. So, let us now consider the lock range of this uh, PLL. When V i input voltage is 0 nothing is applied to the input just ground it ok that is let us go back to the loop. So, here the input is not connected then what happens this is a multiplier. So, if one input is 0 theoretically output has to be 0 that means nothing happens here other than remaining in whatever state earlier it was or quiescent state ok and this will remain at a quiescent state. So, V c is at a certain quiescent state ok by design. So, let us say it is at V c q. So, the output frequency is going to be something corresponding to this VCQ which is called omega naught Q let us say. So, if it is having an output frequency of omega naught Q only one input is applied the other input is not applied. So, the multiplier output is 0 if there is some feed through it will be some component of omega naught coming through ok, but the low pass filter will eliminate it. So, nothing happens here this continues to remain at the quiescent state of VCQ and that is called the free running frequency of the PLL. So, that is what is stated here V i equal to 0 V c is equal to V c q output of the linear uh, V c o it is not V c o this is nothing but V c o is an AC signal with frequency of k V c o into V c q if it is a linear V c o and that is omega naught q. This frequency is called the free running frequency of the PLL FLL and depends upon the gain of the amplifier its input offset okay, and V reference etcetera of the amplifier input. So, uh, quiescent state of the FLL is defined as V i equal to 0 and V c in the operating range. So, V c q setting the V c q ok such that it is free running at the desirable frequency we will just see what the desirable frequency of free running should be later is called tuning the PLL. So, setting a desirable 
omega naught q is called tuning the PLL. This can be done by setting the VCQ value or setting the value of R and C that uh, determines the uh, free running frequency of the VCO. Output of the VCO once again VCO has to be VP some VP dash omega naught Q T plus phi okay. So this is the quiescent state of existence okay. Now what is Lagrange is what we are going to consider V average is VP VP dash by 20 cos phi and therefore now if we apply an input voltage omega uh, that is input frequency omega i equal to omega naught q. So what is now happening is apply omega i equal to omega naught q. So that is what is done then the output frequency can be Vp dash sin omega naught q t plus phi it has to be that continuing to be that because incoming frequency is same as omega naught q. So what can happen only the phase shift can be something different. So if phi is the phase shift now we have omega i equal to omega naught q and omega naught equal to omega naught q but with a phase shift of phi omega naught q t plus phi vp dash sin. So this is sin omega naught q t vp. So the incoming frequency corresponds to vp sin omega naught q t omega naught corresponds to vp dash sin omega naught q t plus phi. So the frequency has remained the same as incoming frequency we have only the phase shift then output average is going to be of the low pass filter vp vp dash by 20 cos phi this way. But this has to be 0 because the uh, frequency should remain same as omega naught q okay it should not change for it not to change nothing should change at the input of the VCO that means input of the VCO should be at VCQ that means actually this average should have no effect at the output of the amplifier that means cos VP VP dash by 20 cos phi should be 0 or cos phi should automatically get adjusted to pi by 2. Now let us see what happens when omega i changes away from omega i is not equal to omega naught q but close to omega naught q. It can be higher or lower and Vc should change around Vcq by an amount equal to omega naught q minus omega i by k Vcu that is by definition the linear Vcu. So omega naught q minus omega i is the change in frequency that is brought about at the output because output frequency should be same as input frequency. So omega naught q minus omega i by k Vcu is the change in voltage above VCQ or below VCQ depending upon whether omega i is uh, higher or lower than omega naught q. Input to the amplifier therefore should change by omega naught q minus omega i by k VCO into k a the DC gain of the amplifier. This change in V average can be at most be k p d into pi by 2 if it is a linear phase detector. So by definition the phase can change around pi by 2 on one side up to pi on the other side up to 0 that means the extent of total change on either side of pi by 2 pi by 2 is the quiescent phase. 
So, this pi by 2 has to change can change all the way up to pi that means by an extent of pi by 2 on this side and pi by 2 on the other side okay. So, kpd into pi by 2 is the maximum change that the linear phase detector is capable of sustaining okay on either side of the quiescent. So, that means this kpd into pi by 2 should be equal to omega naught q minus the limit of omega i on either side. So, that is called the log range delta omega l which is k v c o k p d k a into pi by 2 k p d into pi by 2 into k v c o into k a which is nothing but g l o this we have called as the d c loop gain into pi by 2. So, that is called the log range it is nothing but the d c loop gain into pi by 2. This is under the circumstance that the amplifier does not go to saturation before that and the VCO continues to act as a linear VCO all the way up to that range without any problem. In such a situation the maximum ever okay, lock range is going to be this if it is a linear phase detector. So, this is the best one can have as the lock range on either side of the uh, let us say free running frequency okay. So, once again k p d into pi by 2 is in our case v p v p dash by 10 if v p is the input uh, incoming uh, frequency magnitude sine wave and v p dash is the output uh, uh, that is uh, square wave and vp dash is the output square wave. So, both are assumed to be square wave because it is a linear phase detector we have assumed. So, vp vp dash by 10 is the maximum value. So, remember that the lock range depends upon the magnitude of vp vp dash. For the linear phase detector for a change of maximum phase shift of plus minus pi by 2 around pi by 2 this is what I have explained amplifier input gets this as the maximum input uh, change right. Uh, so, k a into v p v p dash by 10 is the uh, amplifier output change and therefore, v c o change will be that into k v c o okay, around uh, f naught q. So, f naught q plus or minus k a into v p v p dash by 10 into k v c o okay or it is nothing but okay the uh, delta f l is going to be plus minus k a k p d k v c o pi by 2 g l o into pi by 2 which is the log range around f naught q. So, an example has been chosen here the lock range is given above if V C O can oscillate in that range if the amplifier does not saturate then that is the maximum lock range. So, in our case let us say uh, we have chosen okay, V C Q of 10 by 2 5 volts that is because in our arrangement okay we have made the vco okay this amplifier is removed okay we are just having no amplifier put there we can make the loop gain high by increasing the kvco and kpd and controlling the vp vp dash so this is the uh, actual pll that we are trying out. So, 5 k 5 k attenuator has been put okay. So, this 10 volts DC is going to have a quiescent voltage here of 5 volts 5 k 5 k. So, 5 volts is the quiescent voltage this is our V C Q okay 
and uh, this is going to the VCO that has been designed. Just in the lecture on VCO, we have formulated this uh, Schmidt trigger 2.2K and 1K, okay. R2 is 2.2K, R1 is 1K and uh, frequency of oscillation of uh, this f not q is going to be Vcq by 40 Rc into R2 by R1. This is 2.2K, this is 1K, this R is 1K, this C is 0.1 microfarad with all this this whole thing has been designed. So, this will give you a sort of F not Q of 2.75 kilohertz at uh, VCQ of 5 volts. So, this is the example that we have tried. You can see here F not Q is equal to VCQ by 40 RC into R2 by R1. So, this becomes F not Q as 2.75 kilohertz for the example that we have chosen. Uh, and uh, what is done is Vc as Vcq cos phi has to be 0, so phi has to be pi by 2. So, if I now apply Fi equal to 2.75 kilohertz, the phase shift good it automatically adjust itself to pi by 2. So, that cos phi is 0. So, this is what is done okay, and delta F L is calculated so, V p V p dash by 10 okay, that is the maximum change okay, uh, of D C from V C Q that can occur okay, at the output of the uh, phase detector average right its input is Vp Vp dash by 10 okay and that into half because there is an attenuator there. So, this also gets attenuated in the loop. So, essentially the Kpd is going to be halved here and then applied uh, to the v Vco. So, that into KVCO is the uh, lock range into KVCO is the lock range. So, you have KVCO as 2.2 okay, by 40 into RC. So, it is 2.34 by calculation. So, the lock range is 2.75 kilohertz plus or minus 2.34 kilohertz which is 5.09 kilohertz okay to 0.41 kilohertz okay that is the range. Okay. So, this is what is done uh, Vi equal to 0 input is connected to ground then output frequency happens to be 2.75 kilohertz that is what it is output frequency is 2.5 and the quiescent voltage you can see here is nothing but uh, 5 volts slightly less than 5 volts right. So, this is the uh, situation of the uh, quiescent condition right. You can measure the output frequency it is close to 2.75 kilohertz. Now, what is happening is F i is going to be made equal to F not q. So, what should happen? The phase shift should automatically adjust itself to be 90 degree. So, we have this uh, input adjusted to 10 volts square wave that is the input waveform 10 volt square wave and uh, this is the output waveform of the VCO 
okay and you can see that these are exactly uh, in quadrature with one another or 90 degree phase shift. So, you can see this as the phase locked at 90 degrees pi by 2 and you have the 2 omega component at the output of the low pass filter as expected variable triangular waveform charging and discharging okay and causing an average which is close to the quiescent state okay. So, earlier when it was a DC it was just flat here and you can see that this is remaining at the same level okay as the quiescent but now it is phase locked okay. Now what is bad news Fi is changed away from the quiescent frequency of 2.75 kilohertz. So, what happens then is what is described here. So, it is changed to 1.9 kilohertz from 2.75 kilohertz it has now gone over to 1.9 less okay than the quiescent. So, automatically you can see from the quiescent value of 5 volts it has gone down but it is still double the frequency which is appearing at the output of the low pass filter and this phase change you can see earlier it was 90 degree now it is trying to go out of phase away from 90 degrees right. So, that is the change in phase that means it is trying to go out of phase because ultimately if it goes to this this will be 180 degree right. So, it is going towards pi on this side. So, this is the output frequency right. So, we have purposely made this output different from the input to show the distinct difference between output and input waveforms and we have applied uh, I think 10 volt supply. So, uh, whereas the op amp cannot go all the way up to 10 volts it goes up to about some 8.5 volts also. Now, the frequency is changed to still lower to 1.2 kilohertz. So, it goes further down the DC. So, the control voltage is keeping on changing to change the output frequency to the same value as the input frequency and the phase shift now again goes towards pi more towards pi okay this is the uh, input waveform this is the output waveform. So, you can see it is going towards pi almost close to pi. So, 1.2 kilohertz 1.1 just gone out of lock you can see no longer is it uh, double the frequency right it is just not in sync with a incoming uh, that is the output incoming frequency is totally different from the free running frequency. It goes back to the free running frequency and this is the variation this is the uh, beat frequency that is produced okay that is nothing but omega i minus omega naught q beat frequency which is the output of the low pass filter there is you can very clearly see that it is not any longer a DC with double the frequency okay. So, this is uh, the incoming frequency which is much lower than the free running frequency. So, this goes back to the free running frequency and now the uh, incoming frequency is above the free running frequency 2.75 is the free running frequency and 3.5 is the frequency kilohertz 
is the frequency of the input. So, you can again see the beautiful locking and it has gone above 5 volts. Again this is double the frequency riding over the average which is uh, close to 7.5 volts and you can uh, find out the frequency of oscillation which is close to the incoming frequency of 3.5 kilohertz. Exactly it is in synchronization with the incoming frequency now locking is taking place. What has happened to the phase shift? Now it is coming to be in phase from the 90 degree quiescent it is coming to be in phase going towards 0 phase right output input sorry input and output. So again at fi equal to 3.6 kilohertz this is 3.5 just 3.6 kilohertz it has gone out of log. So, this is again the beat frequency it has come back to the free running frequency right and it is producing the beat frequency around the free running frequency this way mm. and then this is the incoming waveform. So, you can see the uh, FM kind of thing right. Now that is what happens in the capture range. Let us dwell on this for some time. So, what has happened? This is our VC, okay. The uh, input to the VCO or the output of the low pass filter here, okay, is what is given here versus incoming frequency. So, when the incoming frequency is same as the free running frequency this is at VCQ, VC is at VCQ. So, this is the operating point. So, there this is omega naught Q corresponding to VCQ and this is nothing but KVCO. Okay. 1 over KVCO. So, if you are now changing giving an input which is same as omega naught Q it will be VCO input will be at VCQ. So, if it is higher then this is the change in DC that is produced which corresponds to omega I minus omega naught Q that is the change okay in frequency divided by KVCO. So, the slope of this is 1 over KVCO. So, it will go on like this all the way up to the lock range then go out of lock this is what we saw and on the other side it will go on all the way up to this and go out of lock. So, first you have to start with omega I equal to omega naught Q to achieve this. So, if it is going out of lock then once it goes out of lock right this is continuing to free run at omega naught q right. So, this has come down okay. So, just let us consider omega i either much greater than omega naught q or omega i much less than omega naught q. This whole thing was the lock range if you start with omega equal to omega naught q go all the way up to this and without getting lost okay loss of lock come back okay you can go all the way. So, you can keep swinging from here to here without any problem as long as you are not going out of lock. But suppose you go out of lock it is free running at omega naught q. Now, if the frequency is in this range beyond the lock range obviously omega i minus omega naught q or omega naught q minus omega i okay both these frequencies are much greater than 
the omega L B. Please understand this both this omega i minus omega naught q and omega naught q minus omega i both these are much greater than omega L p. That means, these components correspond to high frequency. So, whether you are starting at this point or at this point the difference in frequency corresponds to a frequency which is much greater than omega L p then what happens? no output change can occur in the low pass no output can change right because low pass filter cut off frequency is such that it is not allowing any change that means vco is going to continue to free run at omega naught q so capture cannot take place this is the phenomenon of capture we are discussing right we have discussed lock range as the range where you start with omega I equal to omega naught q and go on either side of this where the lock is maintained. But now we are considering a frequency beyond the lock range and if omega I minus omega naught q is much greater than omega L p until this difference in frequency okay, which is the average okay, becomes low enough to let something happen at the output of the low pass filter we see we will not change ok. So, the capture phenomena is going to take place mostly depending upon the low pass filter cut off frequency setting that is if the low pass filter cut off frequency is very low the capture range is very low around omega naught q that means until capture takes place okay and lock occurs okay thereafter omega naught is always following omega i okay and the low pass filter will let that okay lock all the way up to its limit of lock range on either side so this is the capture phenomena capture takes place then lock continues until it goes out of lock on this side again until you come close to omega naught q okay such that the low pass filter lets something out so that okay the vco starts swinging until it captures the incoming frequency and the locking continues all the way up to the limit of the lock range on this side so this way it comes captures keeps the lock and goes out of lock again on this side captures so, capture range is this range of frequencies. So, first for it to lock it has to come within the capture range then it can lock and maintain itself in the lock range ok. So, please remember this capture range is always less than the lock range. So, we are now trying to establish mathematically by making drastic approximations how the capture range can be roughly evaluated. So, closely follow what I am trying to explain omega naught q minus omega i if it is close enough to omega L p then output of the low pass filter if the input to that is assumed to be a sine wave which is not the case really because this is an assumption drastic assumption in order to simplify the analysis. So, if it is a sine wave of magnitude V p sin omega no q minus omega i t right, that is the only component low frequency component which is uh, having some effect at the output of the low pass filter. So, what happens to this? This frequency so, this gets attenuated by if you call this as delta omega by square root of 1 plus delta omega C r square because that is the low pass filter 1 by 1 plus S C r S is equal to j omega what is j omega? j omega is now the difference in frequency component delta omega ok. So, this is replaced by j delta omega. So, that gets attenuated by this 
and it will get subjected to some phase that we are not bothered. However, this sine wave says that the peak magnitude of change at the output of the uh, V average is going to be V p divided by square root of this going to be attenuated by this much ok. Now, this is going to be the input to the V c o around V c q. So, the V c o frequency is going to change from omega naught q by plus minus this V p divided by square root of 1 plus delta omega c c r square ok into k a into k V c o. So, that is clear that by definition. So, this whole thing ok is going to be equal to the limit if this particular swing of V c o is such that it can at least at some point of time become equal to the incoming frequency the probability of capture is high. So, this is the maximum swing around omega naught q that can take place. So, when the maximum swing reaches the incoming frequency that is when capture can take place probability of capture is high. If you consider that then that is the capture range omega i minus omega naught q is the delta omega c limit this delta omega is also delta omega c. So, this is what the capture range is V p is strictly speaking nothing but k p d into pi by 2 the maximum DC voltage that can on either side of quiescent occur that is what we have defined earlier. So, this is nothing but the lock range as we had earlier defined. So, this delta omega c is therefore plus minus the lock range divided by g l naught into pi by 2 is the lock range divided by square root of 1 plus capture range square into C r square. So, if let us say delta omega C squared into C squared R square which is strictly speaking nothing but omega L p ok 1 over C r is omega, omega L p. So, this if it is much greater than 1 this one can be ignored then delta omega c squared ok is equal to delta omega l into omega l p or capture range is simply square root of lock range into omega l p. It depends upon omega l p and therefore, capture range is nothing but square root of lock range into omega l p if this assumption is valid. You can assume that this is so and then evaluate it this way and check whether this is so or not that is easier otherwise you have to solve a quadratic equation here ok. Now, the process of capture or capture time this is more complex. So, let us again consider V c versus time. So, when a signal comes within the capture range how the capture takes place is what that means let us consider that it is at omega naught q and an input frequency which is within the capture range is applied as a step input at the input of the PLL a step frequency change then how does the capture take place. So, at t equal to 0 what happens is that omega i ok minus omega naught q is the instantaneous frequency that is found here. So, that instantaneous frequency change at the output of the low pass filter or input of the V c o keeps producing a DC progressively going towards another value corresponding to which the frequency is omega i. So, this is the new value ok of d c finally, is settling down at the output of the 
low pass filter or input of the VCO. So, that is the setting DC voltage, but how the DC voltage is generated is that omega i minus omega naught keeps on changing omega naught keeps on getting adjusted okay, so that it produces a DC progressively going towards the final value. So, that means this area is minimal and this area is okay, large okay, so that instantaneously the frequency change occurs this way in order to produce a DC on this side. Okay. This time for it to change from this quiescent to the final value is called the capture time 90 percent of that. Okay. So, from 10 percent of this to 90 percent is the capture time that also depends upon the low pass filter capacitor and time constant. Now, coming to the application of the PLL. So, VCO is nothing but the FM generator or FSK generator. This is the FM generator or FSK generator. So, this is going through the transmission line and being received here and applied to the phase detector amplifier plus low pass filter and the VCO. So, according to us if this is an FM this will be the same FM. Okay. So, this is the FM. So, if the carrier is no this is an important thing uh, being received here at a certain value then we have to tune our VCO so that, that omega not q of this is equal to the omega carrier. Then we have the maximum deviation possible around omega not q because the phase shift can change all the way from pi by 2 to 0 to pi. Okay. So, that means tuning the uh, PLL involves tuning the VCO such that the carrier frequency corresponds to the omega not q. Then what happens here is that this being put in the feedback loop in order to produce the same FM as this, this should have generated the modulating frequency at the input. So, we have here FM detected or FSK detected output. So, if this is a sine wave of certain frequency, the sine wave of same frequency with same deviation has to be produced here. So, we have recovered the modulating frequency at this point. So, FM detection can take place. So, we have seen this happening in our system design lecture on how a feedback can perform the inverse function. So, if it is a FM generator which is put in the feedback part, it actually does FM detection. So, this is uh, demonstrated here. You can see uh, that input FM generator is a square wave of amplitude 250 hertz and uh, we have the F naught Q of the whole system okay, at 2.75 kilohertz the previous example. To that we have uh, applied the same VCO here with the modulating frequency here which is nothing but a square wave in this case uh, uh, sorry sine wave in this case. So, of uh, I think we have applied a sine wave here. So, of uh, uh, frequency 250 hertz low enough. So, that this is the modulating input and this is the output. You can see the amplitudes are the same. Okay. So, if it is low enough the amplitudes will be the same. Okay. That means, actually speaking if you uh, consider F naught by F i it is going to be 1, but it can peak and come down. That means, 
the rate of change of phase should be occurring or frequency should be occurring at a frequency much less than the natural frequency of the system which is nothing but okay omega n is root of dc loop gain into the uh, what is that the lock range sorry it is nothing but that into the omega lp this we had shown earlier please check that much before we have shown here root of gl naught into omega lp is the natural frequency so the rate of change of frequency okay that is the omega m that we have applied should be low enough compared to omega m that is the requirement for it to uh, be acting as a frequency follower otherwise distortion will occur okay this is an important function of the uh, phase lock loop in uh, FM detection or FSK detection right. It could be a square wave again it will produce the square wave exactly okay with little bit of distortion because of the low pass filter. Transmission line. So this is what is done what is signal conditioning here actually uh, this is what is called a repeater station we have a transmission line uh, carrying the uh, microwave signal from one station to another but before that it accumulates lot of noise okay as it comes through the uh, microwave line and uh, gets distorted because of the uh, transmission line characteristic. So you have to restore the signal to noise uh, increase the signal to noise ratio. So you just put a PLL here so that you take the output of the VCO this is the VCO output here. So it is the same FM or FSK that is transmitted in the transmission line that is received here and but restored in strength that means power and devoid of the additional noise okay it can further go to a greater distance okay if you have the repeater station. So this is called signal conditioning this is another important application of the PLL. So uh, you can have many such uh, PLLs uh, containing uh, the different uh, uh, what is that uh, data from different uh, modems put together received here and restored to higher level of uh, power and uh, devoid of noise retransmitted. Frequency synthesis is uh, what is called as the primary application of the uh, PLL which was first uh, used by the microwave people because they had uh, difficulty in generating stable frequency sources at that high frequency. So they had to start with crystal frequency and go on to uh, higher frequencies. So that required the help of efficient uh, multipliers frequency multipliers. So this is what comes into picture let us say we have a frequency counter here divide by n counter this is easily designed and available. So this fi comes here as fi by n this is the input frequency to the PLL which also contains a VCO cascaded with another counter divided by M counter let us say. So this is going to be uh, I mean the new VCO which is the earlier VCO with a divide by M counter which is programmable okay. Then we have this frequency divided by M becoming equal to fi by n this frequency is tracked by this output 
in this PLN okay. So output frequency is same as input frequency and this frequency divided by m okay is what is equal to fi by n. So this frequency is nothing but fi into m by n. So we have f output okay divided by m equal to fi by n. So f output is m by n into fi. So there is such an easy technique of multiplying by an integer m and dividing by an integer n you can get any non integer value for m by n. So theoretically you can synthesize highly accurate output frequencies using this but efficiently you can do it okay for any frequency by incorporating multiplication and frequency translation together to form a complete accurate frequency synthesis. How do you do frequency translation? It's simple omega i is the input omega naught is the output this response to omega i minus omega naught omega i plus omega naught is got rid of by the low pass filter and if you have uh, an input frequency of delta omega shift that is to be achieved this output will be omega i minus omega naught plus or minus we do not know delta omega any one of this can be sustained any one only can be sustained that means if one of this becomes equal to 0 that is DC that is ultimately the what the low pass filter lets out only the DC then that is the steady state that means omega i can be uh, omega naught can be either equal to omega i okay plus delta omega or omega i minus delta omega that means it can achieve a highly accurate shift in frequency by delta omega. So it is one of these components that is sustained as DC. So this is the frequency translation loop combined with frequency multiplication it becomes a powerful tool to synthesize accurately okay uh, frequency components uh, for use in uh, transmitters and receivers. Speed control motors. This is the important application in the present day speed controls. Here it is nothing but the PLN. This is the reference oscillator divide by n counter just as before. So you can get uh, any frequency comp as let us say f reference, f reference by n. So then we have a phase detector here as before then the loop filter and the power driver the uh, motor field winding so that the speed can be controlled okay. This con uh, outputs a set of pulses how is it done you have a motor rotor connected to a disc this shaft is connected to a disc with perforations here at the uh, circumference of the disc equidistant that should be done. So this is done by photolithography this is called uh, optical taco these are available okay you put uh, let us say what is called as opto opto coupler is nothing but an a light emitting diode with the photo transistor in a package so this produces nothing but a set of pulses as the light gets uh, caught by the opto coupler right it produces pulses and 
number of pulses produced per second based on the rotation of the motor will be equivalent to nothing but a VCO right voltage controlled oscillator here. So, this again forms a phase lock loop and the current day speed drives etcetera are controlled essentially by a frequency reference which is much better than voltage reference okay and potential divider arrangement. This is a very stable uh, input okay and the future electronics will be most probably shifting from voltage or current reference to frequency or time references. So, this is one such block which is using the principle of phase locking okay for speed control application. So, AM detection also can be carried out in a similar fashion. So, what is done here is that the AM okay comes through a limiter. So, that amplitude modulation and noise is removed. So, essentially it has the carrier frequency and this gets applied to the uh, phase detector comes out right amplifier plus low pass filter and then the VCO. So, VCO now has the carrier frequency right this uh, shifted in phase because there will be uh, in quadrature if omega naught q is same as the carrier right there will be a phase shift of pi by 2. So, if there is a phase shift of pi by 2 and then we multiply okay then uh, nothing is detected because one is sin phi and other is cos phi. So, whereas we want this to go into the multiplier after a phase shift preferably of 90 degrees. So, that this is cos omega t and this also is cos omega t is cos squared omega t ok. So, it produces an average corresponding to the detected signal AM detection is possible low pass filter is put. So, that uh, the double the uh, frequency component is removed only the uh, low frequency component corresponding to the modulating signal is allowed. So, uh, this is the AM detection scheme. So, essentially it is a frequency selective AM detection right. So, it removes the noise here ok and then generates the pure carrier with the uh, in phase component ok otherwise it is quadrature phase and then multiplies again to detect the AM the synchronous detection. Synchronization is again the obvious application in television and uh, uh, other receivers uh, particularly television receivers video receivers ok. We have uh, the synchronization pulses necessary horizontal and vertical signal those can be recovered ok uh, from the signal uh, composite video signal ok using PLLs ok. So, in conclusion this block PLL is an important block which is uh, essential in present day electronic system understanding. Clock recovery also is done that is a digital PLL because the phase detector need not be necessarily uh, the analog multiplier. It can be uh, an XOR gate ok and uh, edge detection can be done in order to find out the phase ok. So, those digital PLLs and delay lock loop is equivalent to the true PLL that we discussed earlier. These are the ones which are coming to picture in the present day 
uh, era of packet switching and clock recovery. Thank you very much.